Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to first do a few more exceptions to conjugating the you form, and then we're going to go into some more details about how it's used. First, let's go over this exception. Whenever the verb stem ends with the consonant hia, most of the time, you'll remove the hia, and then you'll attach the sound a to the final syllable, and combine it with that final syllable. And finally, attach yu. So the verb hayata would become haeyo, kurota becomes kureo, and dorata becomes doreo. When the verb stem ends with the consonant tigut, some of the time you'll remove the tigut, attach the consonant lir, and then attach the vowel a or o as usual directly to the end. And finally, attach yo. So the verb tita becomes turoyo, kota becomes koroyo, and kedata becomes kedarayo. And last but not least, whenever the verb stem ends with the consonant, shiot, most of the time, you'll remove the shiot, then you'll attach the syllable a or o as usual. This does not combine with the end. And then you'll attach yo. So, natta becomes na yo, butta becomes buoyo, and chitta becomes chioyo. Now let's talk about how you can sound more or less colloquial by using the yu form. First, keep in mind that using the yu form isn't just about sounding more polite. It also has a soft and respectful feel. When you're using the yu form, your goal is often to sound respectful. However, there are ways to adjust the amount of politeness you show using the yu form, and this will adjust the feel of your speech. One way to do that is by removing markers, for example, the topic, subject, or object marker. Doing this can make your speech sound both more natural, but also slightly more colloquial if it's done too much. And we'll cover this in detail in a later lesson. Markers are often removed like this whenever you're speaking colloquially. So this will be your everyday conversations, but not for official speeches or essays. Now, removing all of your markers in your sentences can cause your speech to sound almost like slang and slightly more colloquial. And again, we'll cover all of this in detail in a later lesson. But before we go further, I should talk a little bit more about removing markers. You shouldn't remove any of your markers. So the topic marker, subject marker, or object marker, when doing so could cause your sentence's meaning to be vague. For example, 저 김치 먹어요, meaning I eat kimchi, when said at a table, could be misunderstood as meaning 저 that instead of 저는. This would mean eat that kimchi. Now, it doesn't mean that it will be, but it could be. For another example, the sentence 저 좋아해요 could either be 저는 or 저를, and the meaning would be different. So in some contexts, this could sound vague. However, the object marker can and is often removed whenever it would sound repetitive. And doing this does not affect how colloquial your sentence sounds. For example, 저는 저녁을 요리를 해요 would sound repetitive because of the two object markers being close together. So instead, you would say 저는 저녁을 요리해요. Now, if you're not sure whether removing a marker would cause your specific sentence to be vague, I recommend not removing it. Next, let's talk just a little bit about honorific speech. Now, we will go into detail about this in a later lesson, but just know that adding honorific speech to your sentences in the right way can make your sentences sound more respectful. For example, this sentence is standard and informal. It's not disrespectful, but it's not especially polite. 혹시 알아요? By chance, do you know? Since this is a sentence, or here actually a question about another person, it could be made even more respectful by adding honorific speech. 혹시 아세요? By chance, do you know? Again, keep in mind that the term you form does not always mean polite speech. By itself, it's informal and you can adjust its feel depending on how you use it. 
Another way to make your speech sound more respectful without having to use honorific speech is just by adding the verb endings naio or kaio. So let's do a quick review of how to use these endings naio and kaio. These are verb endings which add the feeling of being especially curious to any question that you're asking, but they have a side effect of also making what you're asking sound more polite. So using these endings actually changes the feel of the you form, and the sentences will not only sound more polite, but softer. Note that these two endings are still just using the you form. So here's how to conjugate those. If the verb stem ends with a lir, you'll remove it first. And then for action verbs, you'll simply attach nayo to the stem. For descriptive verbs, however, you'll attach ungayo if it ends in a consonant, or a nian followed by kayo after a vowel. Note that for descriptive verbs, if the verb stem ends with a piup, you'll remove it and attach u as usual, followed by a nian and kayo. And here are a few example sentences using this form. This could become Do you or someone like spicy food? This could become How far is it from here to Busan? These nayo and kayo endings can even be combined with honorific speech, when appropriate, and this will sound even more respectful. For example, you could have this sentence. Do you like spicy food? Now, there are some exceptions when you're using these forms, the first one being whenever you're using them in the past tense, you'll simply attach nayo to the verb stem regardless of the type of verb. For example, the action verb mokda would become mogon nayo, and the descriptive verb topta would become toon nayo. So it's simply attaching nayo to the verb stem in the past tense. Also, if a descriptive verb stem ends with a consonant, it's common and acceptable to just use either kayo or nayo. For example, the descriptive verb chupta could become chungayo or just chumnayo. Also note that in casual speech, these endings simply become na and ka. But what if you're working with a sentence that doesn't end with a verb? Well, that's where io or yo come in handy. Here's how those work. You'll attach io to the end of a sentence if it ends with a consonant, or yo if it ends with a vowel, or the letter lir. For example, chip would become chibiyo, and hakyo would become hakyoyo. So this would be if you just wanted to make the sentence a house or a school. Technically, I should say that this is always supposed to be yo and not io. So house should be jibyo. And in fact, whenever this follows a marker, only yo is added. So this would be unyo, nunyo, io, kayo, and ulyo, and lulyo. However, although it's technically incorrect, io still tends to get used after other words that end with a consonant, as it usually sounds more natural. All right, before we go over some last notes, try to take this quiz. You can pause the video here and then resume it when you're ready. Here are the answers. First, true, the regular yu form, so heo, is not always polite, but it's not considered to be disrespectful. The next one is also true. The nayo or kayo endings can be combined with honorific speech. And for the conjugations, you have kada becoming kanayo, itta becoming innayo, mandirda becoming mandanayo, kirda becoming kingayo, and irda becoming irangayo. Here are some notes about this lesson. Although you can remove markers from sentences, you should not remove particles in this way. This can more easily cause a sentence to sound vague. For example, the particles e, ege, man, to, wa, kwa, and many others. 
An exception to this is the words yogi, kogi, and chogi, which can remove a after them. Also note that the yo form is often pronounced in speech as yo, despite being written as yo. Pronouncing yo as yo sounds slightly less polite, but it's very commonly used. For example, annyeonghaseyo could be pronounced as annyeonghaseyo. And that's all for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to start learning about formal speech as well as the nida ending. 그럼 다음에 또 봐.